untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white token combo deck titled Reverent Reflection, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a token deck featuring a few different anthem effects, such as Rally the Ranks from Kaldheim, a two-man enchantment that as it enters a battlefield we have to choose a creature type, which is going to be human in our case, since every single creature and token in our deck is human, and all those creatures will get plus one plus one, as well as a glorious anthem which gives all our creatures plus one plus one. Now we could also be playing with Sanctuary Lockdown, since we were playing a human deck and it has additional upside, but Glorious Anthem provides one additional devotion, which is very important for one of the centerpieces of our deck, Reverend Hoplite, a 5 mana 1 2 human soldier that when it enters a battlefield creates a number of 1 1 white human soldier creature tokens equal to our devotion to white, and our white devotion is calculated by adding all the white mana symbols on the permanence we control, and that will make up our white devotion, so Reverend Hoplite can often make an entire army of human soldier tokens that will also get the benefit from our various anthem effects. Now the reason we're splashing blue is for Mystic Reflection, which can enable some crazy synergies in our deck. It's a 2 mana instant that also has Fortel, so we can pay 2 generic mana to exile it and then later cast it for its Fortel cost of just a single blue mana. And then we can choose target a non-legendary creature, and the next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as copies of the chosen creature. So there's a lot of crazy things we can do with Mystic Reflection, but our main game plan is to cast a Reverend Hoplite with one additional blue mana available, and then in response to the Reverend Hoplite's trigger that generates those tokens, we cast our Mystic Reflection targeting Reverend Hoplite, and now all those tokens we would originally get from Reverend Hoplite turn into additional copies of Reverend Hoplite, which also increase our devotion to white even further, so now we get to make this insane amount of Reverend Hoplites and Human Soldier tokens, which will still benefit from Glorious Anthem and Rally the Ranks. Now there's other things we can do with Mystic Reflection, such as using it as a poor man's counter spell. If the opponent casts a creature, we can maybe target one of our tokens, and then the opponent's creature will enter the battlefield as a copy of our token instead. Or we can use it to maybe copy the opponent's creature if they have something nice in play, and then we can just cast a small token maker and turn some of our tokens into that better creature that the opponent controls. So there's a lot of flexibility here, but of course the main reason why we're playing it is for the Reverend Hoplite combo. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we also have a full playset of Pious Wayfair as a 1 mana 1 2 human scout with Constellation, saying whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, target creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and we've got 12 enchantments to go with it between Rally the Ranks, Glorious Anthem, and Omen of the Sun. We also have the full playset of Charming Prince, 2 mana 2 2 human noble, that when it enters the battlefield we have 3 different options between Scry 2, which is the mode we're going to use most often if we played early on to help us set up our various combos, we can gain 3 life, useful against aggressive decks, or we can exile another target creature we own and return it to the battlefield under our control at the beginning of the next end step, so it can essentially flicker one of our creatures, which is also very nice with our Reverend Hoplite. And then we also have the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant, just as a powerful human, 2 mana 1 1, that at the beginning of combat on our turn can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so we can also potentially copy our Luminarch Aspirant with our Mystic Reflection by playing another token maker and have a whole bunch of Luminarch Aspirant in play, which can also take over a game. Then we've got our Rally the Ranks and Mystic Reflection, alongside our Glorious Anthem and four copies of Omen of the Sun, an enchantment we can play at instant speed thanks to Flash, so that also synergizes nicely with our Pious Wayfair. And when it enters the battlefield we get to make two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens and we gain two life, can also sacrifice it for two and a white to scry two, although we typically want to keep it in play to increase our devotion to white. And then finally Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, another token maker, with the minus two making two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, can maybe enhance our tokens with the minus one, and can also be escaped out of the graveyard, so shines against the mill decks as well. And then of course our four copies of a Reverend Hoplite. And then the mana base also includes four copies of Castle Ardenvale, which is excellent here as it will benefit from all those anthem effects, and it also generates human tokens. And then we've got ten planes, four islands, four of the blue-white pathway, and two copies of Fabled Passage. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Sadly our hand is missing token makers and triple anthem by itself is not really gonna cut it. This is better. What do we get rid of? Maybe the Pious Wayfarer? 
We lose a bit of early pressure, but the other cards are a lot more impactful. Charming Prince can dig towards maybe a Reverend Hoplite or a Fourth Land. Alright, so we're up against Blue Black Mill. So Scrying with the Prince is not going to be incredibly impactful. And Gargoyle can just block, so I think I'd rather just foretell Reflection here. Meyer Triton mills the opponent, so maybe it's a self-mill deck instead. And Throne of Death. Alright. For now, play Glorious Anthem. And then next turn we can maybe play Elspeth and make a few tokens. We see Emery, which also combos nicely with the Legendary Artifact. So some sort of blue-black graveyard deck. One card in my graveyard, so Drown in the Loch shouldn't be able to counter Elspeth at least. Don't really need double blue. Next turn we do have the option of Maybe using Mystic Reflection in combination with Elspeth's minus two. Ooh, Waker Waves. So if they can reanimate Massacre Worm or Waker, we could be in trouble. As we see, Cauldron of Eternity. So they might get it back with Emery. Although we could play another Anthem so our creatures don't die to the minus two, minus two effect. Emery does go for Cauldron. Which can be played for just double black. So we could also copy the opponent's Vantra's Gargoyle with Mystic Reflection, since the opponent's graveyard is pretty full. So we have a lot of options. I'm kind of liking Anthem and then Reflection minus Elspeth copying Gargoyle. So let's do that. Starting with Anthem. See if that resolves. And then... Yeah, I guess we'll just... Minus two. So this is another upside of Glorious Anthem over Sanctuary Lockdown. If we copy opposing creatures, they still get plus one, plus one. I am proud of my comrades. And then might as well attack with my tokens here. Gargoyle can block. Sadly, mills a Reverend Hoplite. Right, so we've got two 7 6 copies of Gargoyle. Cannot block, but can attack. So now reanimating a Massacre Worm doesn't look as devastating. Another Mire Triton to fill the graveyard. See a copy of King Narfi's Betrayal. Another fun mill card. And a Thirst kills one of the Gargoyles, so they're not going to use Cauldron of Eternity this turn. Another Rally. So, what's our plan here? Charming Prince can scry, but the mill effect kind of counteracts it to an extent. So, I could double rally. Although naming Gargoyle is not super exciting. So maybe we just go Aspirant plus Charming Prince anyway. And then we assume that they mill my top card with Gargoyle. Or we could rally the ranks as well. Start with Aspirant. 
And then... I guess we'll minus one. Pretty close to escaping Elspeth if we get to six mana too. Find your valor and fight. Those can attack. Point on Mills. And then I think we'll play Prince for now. Yeah, I think Scry is still probably the best we can do. And then Fabled Passage. I don't particularly care for. Aspirant would be fine. So I could keep Aspirant on top or Fabled Passage first if we expect the opponent to just mill with Gargoyle. Although if I just draw the Fable Passage, it's not the end of the world since that gets us closer to escaping Elspeth. So I could just keep both on top like this. And then if they don't mill me, I just play Double Rally, which is still fine. So let's see if they can find an answer to their own Gargoyle. They have a lot of activated abilities here between Throne of Death and Cauldron. And a lot of creatures to reanimate. Cycles another Waker of Waves. So they can just start reanimating those. Instead another Thirst to take care of Gargoyle, but once again unable to leverage their Cauldron. So we drew the Fabled Passage. Don't need to shuffle if I don't want to. And for now we just get to double Rally on Human. And Aspirin probably puts counter on herself. Put in Dos Mill, the Aspirin we kept on top. So now if we draw land 6, we can escape Elspeth. Their opponent's at 5. Gargoyle cannot block, so bringing back Waker of Waves or Massacre Worm is not enough. Another Waker Waves cycled here. If we were to top deck Reverend Hoplite now, we've got a ton of devotion, so that would be great. And the tokens would survive Massacre Worm. Mire Triton as a blocker gains two life, but her opponent's still dead on board since Gargoyle cannot block. Alright, we could have escaped Elspeth here, but we'll save the opponents some time. And there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We've got Prince to scry towards Mystic Reflection to combo with our Hoplite. Anthem effects would also be great. And we can apply some pressure early on. All right, there's Glorious Anthem, so Mystic Reflection and additional lands are both welcome. All right, I think I keep both lands. That will get us up to five. So even if we don't draw Reflection, just curving Anthem into Elspeth into Hoplite is going to be great. Black Mana could indicate a Sweeper effect in our future, which is not something we look forward to. Black-green. 
and Finn. All right, so this is the Death Touch deck. So actually making a bunch of tokens against Death Touch creatures is pretty nice for us. So for now, Pump Wayfarer, probably still attack with both. I'm okay taking two poison. Yeah, I'm not sure how our opponent's gonna handle Hoplite here in a few turns. Shadow Spear? Alright. I guess that helps. So I'm just gonna attack, play Elspeth, minus two. Opponent might have like a hooded blight fang, which is pretty strong against planeswalkers, but then we can just double block Finn. Alright, binding. Takes out our anthem. It's pretty strong. Also reduces our devotion significantly. But Hoplite's still pretty strong here too. Then I'll just minus one Elspeth. Pumping the two tokens. I will do my best to support you. And those get to attack. And next turn we should be able to attack with everyone for the win. Questing beasts. Alright. Another pretty strong play. Takes out Elspeth for free. Although they only have two blockers and we've got more than seven attackers here. So no need to play Aspirant. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. We've got a uh, Hoplite plus Reflection combo. Charming Prince to help us hit our land drops, maybe find an Anthem effect to increase our devotion. And Elspeth can also help. All right, so just need lands here. So, Anthem is tempting, but I think I should be on the lookout for additional lands instead. Aspirants. So, could Omen, we could Exile Reflection. Could play Aspirants. Probably go for Omen here. Yurvo, opponent on a mono green stompy deck. And we get to play Elspeth. Or we can Aspirant plus Exile Reflection. Gonna have to wait until turn 6 if we want to combo Hoplite with Reflection, so... Playing Elspeth for now seems fine. And we can just jump with our tokens to buy time. Hopefully they can't give Yorvo Trample. Alright, Questing Beast is annoying too. That takes out our Elspeth for free. No real point in Yorvo attacking Elspeth here, since Elspeth is guaranteed to die. Alright, so... We're just one land away from our Hoplite combo, which is pretty exciting. Can also use Reflection as kind of a pseudo counterspell, although hopefully we can do without. And then, not really intending to chump with Prince since it provides additional devotion, so I guess we'll just bump up a, a random token. Gargroth, all right, that's scary. 
So we'll take four from Questing Beast and chump Yorvo. Alright, another Hoplite. I guess we can cast one in the meantime. Keep pumping the same token to eventually block Questing Beast. And hope to draw a six land soon. Could also sacrifice Omen to find it, but then we lose one Devotion. Troll does Trample. And they've got two of them. Alright. So I can trade off for Gergroth. And then Chump Yorvo. That seems reasonable enough. Alright, there we go. Time to go full control. Play Hoplite with Blue Man available. And in response to the trigger, Reflection. Fifty tokens, and I guess we'll pump up Charming Prince just in case we want to chump Questing Beast for some reason. And then next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Don't expect a mono green deck to have any real sweepers. So yeah, there we go. Fifty tokens, a whole bunch of hoplites. The army has been assembled. If we can draw an anthem effect next turn, that would be the cherry on top, but it's not even necessary. Our opponent seems to be in shock. They're looking at all our cards, trying to piece together what just happened. Blizzard Brawl kills Charming Prince. So, can block Questing Beast. But I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference here. God of Winter to combo with all the snow lands. We're at six. And there's the Anthem as the cherry on top. I think we've got lethal. Alright, just a hair over 100 damage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Just gonna curve Aspirant into Anthem into Elspeth. No real Hoplite or Mystic Reflection in sight, but it's just one of the many things our deck is capable of. Can easily win without it. Opponent appears to be on a black-white controlling deck. Could Charming Prince, could Aspirant here. Let's play Aspirant since we already have Line 3 available. So we can start putting some counters on it. So I could Anthem and then Aspirant can still attack past the wall. That seems good enough. Next turn Elspeth. Opponent takes it. And then maybe turn 5 if we draw land we can go Charming Prince plus Omen. Aha, opponent is on Amazon. Liliana shows up. I'm looking for new minions. Care to volunteer. So do we discard Omen or Elspeth here? Might want to keep second Elspeth in case the first one gets answered. Sure. And then keep the Charming Prince since it's easier to double spell with it. Ooh, nice Hoplite. 
Still probably play Elspeth. Could force a chump by making a 5-5 attacking Liliana. Although I'm pretty happy knocking Liliana down to a 1 loyalty here. So, could also just bump a token to diversify a little bit. Opponent's gonna chump anyway. And then now, probably discard second Elspeth. All the snow lands could also be for Blood on the Snow, the Black Sweeper. Kaya can exile any of our non-land permanents. Gets rid of Elspeth. So it looks like we're setting up the Sweeper with all these Planeswalkers to return from the graveyard. And we did just lose a bunch of Devotion, but we do have a backup Elspeth. So probably just get rid of Charming Prince if they make me discard. So still gonna play Elspeth before Hoplite, just as a better way to sequence against an opposing Sweeper. And then... I don't have to minus, I can just take out both Planeswalkers here. And then keep Elspeth's loyalty intact. Which I don't mind, since they're kind of forced to play a Sweeper here anyway. So we're just playing around the worst case scenario, since we should have most other scenarios covered. Alright, Elspeth Conquers Death punishes us for not minusing. So now if they also have a sweeper, we're gonna be a little sad. Although I could just wait on Hoplite and just hit for 10, make a token end of turn. Sure. And Hoplite isn't affected by Conqueror's Death. Right, another Kaya instead. Can get rid of my Anthem. But they do appear to be dead on board here. So, we're playing around Blood on the Snow. Opponent didn't have it. And we still won. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Prince can maybe dig for Hoplite, and we've got our Reflection plus blue mana already sorted out. Hopefully we can pick up an extra land so I can just Passage to get blue on turn four instead of having to play off curve. That's why we only have two copies of Passage. Ten blue sources should be enough for a Reflection around turn four. All right, picked up a Pathway, so that helps. So, yeah, we'll play Prince, Cry. And Elspeth seems decent as a turn 4 play. So, opponent could maybe be on a black-green Death Touch deck with Lurus as companion instead green-white. And a Bronzeide Lion, fair enough. So we'll just play our Anthem. Pump Wayfarer, attack for six. Opponent takes a trade. Who's gonna exile our prince? Turns into a 3 3. So. Elspeth still looks okay here. Could double block the ooze. Death itself cannot Together we can exact justice. So land would be okay since then I can foretell plus play anthem. If our opponent plays an impressive creature, we can also maybe think about copying it with reflection and Elspeth's minus two. 
Although, given that they have Lurus as companion, they're going to be limited in how large their creatures are. Of course, Hoplite would be great alongside a couple more lands. Alright, there's Hoplite, so for now we can Anthem. Ooze can grow up to a 4 4 at least. So I can pump one creature and get it through. Could wait on Elspeth's Minus to maybe combo with Reflection, which is not a bad idea. Or we can wait until we have 6 mana for Hoplite, which of course is much more exciting. And I don't think a Lurus deck is going to have too much in terms of uh, interaction for the combo, so... For now, I guess we'll pump just a token and attack instead of Wayfarer. Because I'm pretty happy if they want to trade here. And I want to preserve my devotion. Opponent might have like a pump spell or a fight spell. Which could make things a little bit more complicated. Now I'll just make two more tokens. And then try to hang on to our devotion. Opponent's got a preserver end of turn. And sacrifices lantern to draw card. Alright, so we're just trying to buy time until we can set up our combo, which should be game winning. Black mana could imply some discard effects too, so that's maybe a way they can interact. Although I doubt they're playing any sweepers. Alright, land is perfect. So we can foretell. And we're just one land away from assembling the biggest army the battlefield has ever seen. Another Triton's fine. Just have to watch out for instant speed removal in response to me casting hoplites and setting up reflection, so ideally the opponent taps out. Can take a look at their graveyard to see what kind of interaction they might have, although it's all creatures. And a fiend artisan, alright. So our opponent's tapped out, can we find a land? All our lands are untapped at this point. I'll happily trade for Triton. Oh yes. Go full control just in case. Play Hoplite. In response. The game is struggling to keep up with all our triggers. Alright, just 128 tokens. And hopefully Fiend Artisan doesn't have anything to search up that can significantly interact. Although I can't think of much given the Lurus constraint. Alright, GG's. Opponent's gonna let us attack. Hopefully they'll indulge an extra glorious anthem. This is the general. Alright, we'll save them the Elspeth minus activation. Alright, there we go. Minus 548. So yeah, pretty satisfying when it all comes together. Even though our deck isn't fully built around this combo, there's definitely ways we could potentially focus more on the combo, but then our plan B of just being a token deck is not going to be nearly as good. And as you've seen, we can also win games where we just play some token makers, some anthem effects, and that can get the job done. And Mystic Reflection still has plenty of uses, 
can even use it to maybe counter an opposing planeswalker like Ugin the Spirit Dragon and turn it into a 1-1 token instead. So there's quite a few ways we can use the Mystic Reflection, but Mystic Reflection plus Hoplite is definitely the most exciting one. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.